I'm wondering uh, if we're living in this new world where the Attorney General can simply decide, uh, yeah, it's, it's unconstitutional, but it's not so unconstitutional that I'm not willing to enforce it. Uh, if we're in this new world, I, I don't want these cases like this to come before this court all the time. And I think they will come all the time if that's if, if, if that's the uh, the new regime in the Justice Department that we're dealing with. Justice Scalia, one recognized situation in which an act of Congress won't be defended in court is when the president makes a determination that the act is unconstitutional. That's what happened here. The president made an accountable legal determination that this act of Congress is unconstitutional. But then why does he enforce the statute? Well, that's an option that's available to him, Justice Kennedy. There, that in certain circumstances, it makes sense not to enforce. But I don't think the take care responsibility is an all-or-nothing proposition, such that when the president reaches the determination that a statute is unconstitutional, it necessarily follows that he wouldn't enforce it. That's not what happened in Lovett. But let me ask you: so Suppose the uh, constitutional scholars have grave doubts about. Uh, the practice of a president signing a bill but saying that he thinks it's unconstitutional, what do you call it, signing statements or something like that. Um, it seems to me that if we adopt your position that that would uh, ratify and confirm and encourage that questionable practice because if the president thinks the law is unconstitutional, he shouldn't sign it according to some view. And it's a lot like what you're arguing here. It's very troubling. I... I, I in the, in the signing statement situation, Your Honor, one example in the past is Turner Broadcasting. In Turner Broadcasting, that was a circumstance in which it was a, it was a veto, but in the course of the veto, the president made the determination that a particular aspect of that statute was unconstitutional. And what happened as a result of that is that the Department of Justice didn't defend that aspect of the statute in litigation. Now, a subsequent president reached a contrary conclusion. But, uh, but my point is simply that when the president makes a determination that a statute is unconstitutional, it can follow that the Department of Justice won't defend it in litigation. Why what is sometimes, sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. What is the test for when you think your obligation to take care that the laws be faithfully executed means you'll follow your view about whether it's constitutional or not, or you won't follow your view? The, the, Mr. Chief Justice, I'd hesitate to give you a black and white algorithm. There are, there are several considerations that would factor into it. One of the considerations... Excuse me, it's not your view, it's the president's. It's, it's only when the president thinks it's unconstitutional that you can decline to defend it? Or what if the attorney general thinks it's unconstitutional? No, no of course that's... Or the solicitor general, is that enough? 